Hi there, it's Dr. Patricia Coughlin again, uh, talking to you today about the vital importance of facilitating a corrective emotional experience for your patients. Uh, long ago, back in the 40s, Alexander and French, in their groundbreaking research on the effectiveness of psychodynamic psychotherapy, discovered that it was the re-experiencing of the old unsettled conflict, but with a new ending that was the secret to every penetrating result. So let's talk about what this is, in a sense where it happens, and um, how it promotes deep and lasting change. I think when we talk about the corrective emotional experience, we're often talking about what's happening between the patient and the therapist. The last time we were talking about how important it is to spot the transference pattern of behavior. That's the ways in which the patient is actually unconsciously testing you about whether you're going to engage in an old and dysfunctional way of relating or actually going to provide a new and corrective experience. You know, we often think about this in terms of raw emotions, like being able to experience angry feelings or sexual feelings, and having the therapist actively encourage the direct experience and expression of feelings and impulses that have been forbidden uh, in the past is often a very potent corrective emotional experience for the patient. And yet there are two other places where the corrective emotional experience can and often does happen. One is in a sense internally. It's an internal corrective experience uh, between right, two parts of, of the patient, the part that's having these feelings and desires and the part that's been terrified and suppressing them. Uh, so I'm thinking of a case, uh, a 66-year-old woman who had been chronically depressed all her life and really had had 60 years of previous therapy without a heck of a lot of progress. She was a good example of someone who had a lot of intellectual insight, and yet that wasn't enough to produce change. So it was uh, almost a fortunate uh, occurrence that we did the initial three-hour trial therapy prior to my being away. So there had to be a break, uh, two weeks, I think, after this initial contact, which for her was very um, intense. And, you know, she had opened up a lot, particularly around... Uh, grief and sorrow she had never allowed herself to feel before. And then I left, right? I went away. So she was sort of cracked open and left there. And so she came back for the next session, uh, much more detached and walled off. So we really looked at this wall, the cost of it did really kind of a head-on collision, uh, whether we were going to have an honest look at the feelings she was hiding behind the wall or whether she was going to stay back there, you know, inaccessible and uh, suffering alone. So there was actually this breakthrough of anger and rage toward me. And in the process of facilitating this, her actually having the experience she had never allowed herself to have before of heat and then strength and power, she said, oh my, we just stopped there, right? Instead of running, you know, straight away to the portrait, right? What was it actually like for her to experience that powerful emotion without anxiety, without having to get rid of it? And she was just amazed. She said, I feel full. I feel strong. I feel alive. And this is a woman who had essentially been trying to kill herself off in all kinds of ways for 60 years. So that in and of itself was a powerful corrective emotional experience within. And then of course, to be able to express this rage toward me, right, was another level of corrective experience. And having this juxtaposition of 
new versus old experience. You know, as Freud said, we feel in the contrast, not in the state of things. So when you're behaving in a way that's in contrast to former attachment figures and often the current attachment figures people have surrounded themselves with, right, who, you know, uncannily resemble their uh, parents, uh, that in and of itself tends to trigger intense feelings and then to experience rather than avoid those feelings creates this large opening um, into the unconscious where the old conflict can be now re-experienced. And Alexander and French found that it was only the actual experience of a new solution to that old unsettled conflict in the here and now, either with a therapist or with someone in their current life. So that's the third place this can happen. It can happen internally, it can happen with you and the transference, but it can also happen with people in their life. Again, someone who responds in a very different way than they've ever experienced before, this triggering feelings and an unlocking of memories about the original conflict. So really be aware of all the places that this can happen, the different layers at which you want to facilitate this within themselves, between the two of you, and then also making sure right, that you're attending to how these changes are getting generalized right, to their life and to their relationships outside of the therapy. Once patients have had this deep corrective experience, they often become a conduit for change in their families, in their work environment, in the community. And that's also extremely powerful. So many of our patients come in dispirited, feeling helpless, hopeless, and to have this sense of empowerment, really, of, of mastery, of confidence, and of being at cause rather than effect is extremely powerful. So again, it, in this short video, I'm really talking about facilitating the corrective emotional experience around these core affects that have been so anxiety laden. Um, the next time I'm going to talk about other ways in which this can happen, not just around feelings, but around positions in a way, right? Uh, taking on one's authority, uh, being autonomous. There are all kinds of conflicts about or competition, right? These kinds of things that we also want to be alert to so that we can again facilitate a corrective experience instead of inadvertently replaying old, outmoded, and destructive ways of relating. So I hope this is helpful and as always I'm really interested in your comments and feedback. Thanks. Bye-bye.